you shine like the sun bringing that day again when i looked in your eyes feeling this world just disappear and all the love where has this world gone to I don't even care As long as it's me and you And you brought back the sun Dark in my darkest nights And brought all of the love That I thought had disappeared Look where our love has grown Hey, cause it's me and you Hey, all of this love, baby Said you set me free Now we're here <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Beautiful. Well, aloha, good evening. Welcome to Tuning Up with Iggy and Dave. Not the usual introduction we normally get is it Iggy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've, we've certainly raised the bar once again with this one. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce someone that I imagine probably doesn't need much of an introduction. Uh, Ron Artis II, thank you so much for joining us here tonight on Tuning Up with Iggy. Yeah, Iggy. I'm honored to be here with you guys. Well, Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, it's been a, a very busy week for the this team on stage right here. Uh, not only are we joined by Ron Artis II here, but we have Tyler Neist with us as well. Conductor, composer, arranger, violinist, jack of all trades. Uh, we have been working on, I would say a little project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. the only thing little about it is the amount of time in which we've put it together. Correct. Yeah, Dave, I actually, you know, the musicians, we heard about this how long ago? Maybe 10 days ago? Or, yeah. <laughs> so so it, it all came from you, Dave. So I would like you and Tyler and Ron to tell us. The genesis of this project. <laughs> well, Iggy, you know, we like to, yes. to, to on this show, one of the things I like to ask is to take us back to the beginning. Right. Uh, and I think before we get to the project at hand here, I am very curious to go back to the beginning. Uh, we have two incredible artists with us on stage here. And, you know, for the classical audience, maybe aren't as familiar with Ron, though they should be and will be uh, for sure by the end of next week. <laughs> uh, so, Ron, take us back to sorry, the beginning. Sorry, sorry. Oh. One more thing, Dave. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, Iggy. I'm sure people will want to ask questions. Oh, Iggy, thank you. To yes. Ron and Tyler. Well, could you tell them how they could... Uh, well, uh, you know, it's like the weather guy. Dave is the weather guy when he asks you to ask questions because we actually don't know exactly where the, the number, the phone number is. Is it here? Or is it here? <laughs> okay. So, please, <laughs> during the show, I'm sure you have lots of questions for Ron, for Tyler, even for Dave. So, all you need to do is text... The number right here, lower, <laughs> higher. <laughs> uh, and what happens is that if you text that number, it gets to Greg, who then texts Dave. I have no idea what you're texting about. <laughs> Sometimes Dave is looking at his phone, and just, I'm just wondering what he's doing, but <laughs> it's because he's reading your questions. So please, don't be shy. Thank you for that. Yes, please join in the conversation this evening. <laughs> uh, the phone number is here. <laughs> Uh, we welcome you to ask questions, and yeah, there's going to be a lot by the end of this, I think. So, 
The Genesis. The Genesis. How did to this the start? All the so way can, back. Can I interrupt one more time? Yes, <laughs> please. Actually, um, you know, my I, I didn't grow up here, but uh, my wife is from here, uh, oh, cool. and 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 so we would read about you or hear about you, Ronald II. But then she has actually said, "Oh, is, that's a uh, that's a." Uh, uh, Ron Artis' son, one one of, yeah. them. and because we we and actually I remember that uh, when they restored the uh, murals, uh, I think yeah. over uh, over yeah, in the there's Simon, a so. there's a mural in Kailua on the side of Time Supermarket, and that was wow, many many years ago. I was somewhere around that height, right. and I got to go and carry the paints for my dad when we did that mural. So, hey, so, so there we are. That's yeah. more or less where we're starting. More or less. Yeah, let's yeah. start from there. All right, start from there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, uh, so yeah, so I grew up as one of 11 children, a really big family, and we were all homeschooled. And my parents really, really, really were serious about that they wanted to convey the idea to us that we had to find and hold on to our creative individuality. They were like, take time, find out who you are, and introduce that person to us. I, thought, I always thought that was normal and going on in every childhood across the world. I thought everybody woke up at 7 a.m. in the morning and just made all kinds of noise until we started to learn how to make songs. My, um, a lot of my sisters are visual artists, so there's just all this creative energy growing around in my family. Are your parents m musicians? Or? Yeah, so my mother, as a growing up, my mother is a lyricist and a singer, and my dad is just all around crazy creative energy person. So it was um, everything from visual art, portraits to he was a music director for Shalimar on the road, did a lot with the new Motown, did a lot of music with a lot of musicians. And for whatever reason, they were led to move to Hawaii and homeschool their kids and raise us in a creative, loving environment. And, but you uh, were born in... I was born in California, California, Burbank, California. And we moved to Hawaii when I was four years old. And... Um, Man, I am so grateful. With respect to everybody in California, I'm so grateful that my parents decided to raise us here. Now, the voice, I, did you, were you born with a voice or did you uh, work on your voice? Because, I, I mean, I, that's the first thing that, you would I mean, it's sort of funny. obvious when you hear a singer, but really, you, you, <laughs> even now, you know, you're just like, and, then, and, and I'm hearing the acoustical voice because there's, you know, it's, uh, a lot of these days, all you hear is the mic, the sound check, I mean, the, the mixing, and so there's... And the auto-tune. There's, there's not much real human voice that you hear, but so here today, it was and it just pow. Well, the, so. the singing part of my history is, is, is kind of a crazy story. I started on the piano, um, I don't know, it was a lot earlier than I can remember, and then it was um, to bass, guitar, I think guitar really stung me at 13. And I just, it just fused in my life. It was piano and guitar. I didn't start singing or even attempting to really sing till I was 21, 22. Wow. Um, it was a really intense day. And my parents came in one day and they were thoroughly convinced. They said, Ron, we believe God told us you should sing. I was ready to run out of the building. Really? I was like, that's too much pressure. That's too much. And I don't want to be a singer. I love being in the back of the band where you can just live inside of the melody. You know, you can just, if there's a band playing and I'm playing a solo instrument in the back or adding harmonies, I can just live inside of a song. And then all of a sudden I'm supposed to be this figure who's like out front of that. I was like, no, I don't want that. I, I want to just be in the music. I want to live um, through the song. Let, let's skip. We'll come back to it. But then let, let's keep a few years. Yeah. Uh, and get to the point where you you got to meet um, your Tyler. Uh, Tyler Nice. Yeah. Uh, can, how did you guys meet? Uh, we met. It's it, it's crazy. We met at TEDx Portland. Yep. And you had I think you had done a presentation the year before. Right. And then you came back to do another collaboration, which was you were doing. Were you doing that piece with Intel? No, that wasn't me. So you, I did a presentation the year before. You played the following year, and as an alum of TEDx Portland, I get invited to the event and the after party. Yeah. And so I heard Ron play on the show, and I was, I was blown away. And then they played the after party, and I was again, I was just, I was blown away, and I just walked up and said, "You guys are amazing. Here's my number." So what were you presenting? 
I did uh, uh, a 10 minute, uh, I was one of the musical acts with a, a group I have called Bridgetown Orchestra. And um, we did a 10 minute segment from a project I did in 2016 called Overview Effect. Uh, so that's, that's what I was doing. And you're doing. sort of yeah. a renaissance man. You do many things. You're a composer, you're an actor too, violinist. Yes, uh, actor. I've done a bunch of uh, like regional professional theater. Uh, I, I was in Fiddler on the Roof at Portland Center Stage. I was the uh, nice. de facto, I guess, actor violinist so in the area. Were you like classically trained when you were young? Or? Yeah, no, I have a, a degree from Boston University and Manhattan School of Music and violin performance. So, so what drew you to uh, Ron's voice or music? He, he's so musical. The songs are so well written. He's got an unbelievable voice. There's just, he's got so much variety in his style. Right, like there's just it's the it's the full package, right? And I and I could hear in it an amazing uh, potential for collaboration with other instruments. So, Dave, I guess we're skipping ahead, we're hopping here and there, but uh, and going all over the place. But really, it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, let's get to the this project. Then. Okay, okay, I, yeah, it's it's time. So, <laughs> thirteen days, uh, sorry, fifteen days ago today. <laughs> Uh, we are two weeks and one day uh, on the other side of, of when Ron essentially reached out and said, what if we did something? Yes. But I'm going to be if. in, I'm going to be in Hawaii. <laughs> I hear you have an orchestra. <laughs> uh, you know, the genesis of this was also the Hawaii Theater Center here and uh, one of our, our dear friends, Kristen Jackson. Uh, wonderful publicist and, and media person here in Hawaii who, who said, sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's make some connections here and see what can happen. Um, so we talked um, two weeks ago yesterday. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I think my first response was, oh, yeah, we can do maybe three or four charts or something. And the response was, oh, no, I, I have 13. And I have an arranger. And um, I don't this know. Was before I knew I know, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> those, those 13 songs were originally just you and your band? So, no um, orchestra, right? Well, we've done some of these in an ensemble as a quartet, uh -huh. um, plus right. myself. And two? We've done it. Only two. Only two. That was, um, that was Dance With Me. And to Dad. And to Dad. Yes. Really? Yes, it was only two. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I called immediately after I talked to Kristen and we got the green light, like, let's do this. Yeah. I was like, okay, first call, let me call my buddy Tyler. <laughs> and so uh, I, we kind of have this like long running joke that every time I call Tyler and say, we're gonna do a project, there's this insanely short timeline. We, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just been happening that way. So I, I figured, why change anything? When this happened, I called Tyler up and I'm like, what, what are you doing on this day? And since that, he's kind of marked that as a yellow phrase. Like if he hears that. <laughs> it's a red flag if Ron says to me, hey, what are you doing on this day? <laughs> so I was like, hey, what are you doing? Let's do this. We're going to do something amazing. It's going to be the Hawaii Theater. It's going to be, it's going to be, um, um, with the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra, it's gonna benefit what they're doing there. It's been a crazy year, as everybody knows. Let's do this. And he's like, so what are we doing? Wait, <laughs> does it involve Hawaii? I think that was the question he asked before I got through all the details. I was like, yes, are you in? And then I dumped all the heavy <laughs> workload details on him of what we were gonna be doing. And yeah, so it took me, I got that on a ride home in the car and I was a little stunned and <laughs> You know, if I had a DeLorean and would go back to the Tyler 14 days ago, I would not expect that we would be here having done what we did. But, um, yeah. Yeah, because I remember at, uh, the day we recorded, I got chart. I mean, you, you, you made most of them. Like 99% was on our stand, but then there was still one that was kind of, the ink wasn't dry yet. It, yeah. It, it got finalized. So obviously I had to do, basically had to get 12 charts like finalized for this, for this orchestra and for this production. So, uh, you know, I had to sort of prioritize which ones were going to happen. Um, 
and then carry me along I had to do another version of and so I, I was finally able to really sit down and finish it at 11 p.m. the night before the session yes so, <laughs> yes Dave, 11 uh, 11 36 hey it t t two Tyler's defense he had that song done <laughs> <laughs> and then I've seen that edition you, you saw the edition <laughs> and I was like and then I was like Tyler I have an idea and then the sweat started again <laughs> and I sent him a whole different arrangement and he was like love working with you Ron <laughs> and then we just dug into it again that's great yeah um, a project like that Dave requires many people it, organization. it does. It usually, I would say, involves months of planning. It involves months of orchestration and it, uh, months of, of, and we'll ask this question a little bit later, but it's a really different experience for an artist that's used to play in a solo set or with a couple people up on stage to suddenly hop on the steam liner of uh, an orchestra and yeah. to go for that ride. So I'm, I'm going to come back to that question, but there's, <laughs> there's so many aspects in there that it really takes to put a good set list together, um, a good arc to a program. It's the same sort of things that we do in our classical programming, um, but I think magnified. Uh, and so with this opportunity at hand, I made a few phone calls because uh, we couldn't just no offense to the streaming programming we're doing, all those sorts of things. Please tune into the Sounds of Resilience and all of the live programming that we've been doing from the Hawaii Theater Center, which is available on demand now. Um, we had a live performance on Saturday night. Um, I, there's, some of us up here have not slept, I think, since oh. about Saturday yeah. morning. Yeah, a couple of people on the other side of the camera as well. So um, please go, go watch the most recent uh, sounds of the season, but um, I digress. This opportunity came along and we wanted to share this with all of Hawaii. Uh, this is, I think, a, a very strong future for the HSO, these types of partnerships, uh, collaborations, um, and really, as, as Ron said a minute ago, we all have been going through hell and back the past nine months. This has been and, a wild year. Yeah, and it's, you know, we like to talk about what the future looks like and also look back at the past. I, I don't know if I said this on the show last week, but, you know, something that I've seen a few times that have been playing in my head is, you know, look at what happened after the plague. You, you had the Renaissance. Look at what happened after you had the Spanish flu. You've got the Roaring Twenties. Uh, what we created in the last two days here on this stage sets the platform for the next 10 years. It sets the platform for the next decade. So, we went and talked to our friends and colleagues at Hawaii News Now, and we were able to grab three uh, regional television spots here. Uh, the first one airing on December 21st at 6.30 p.m., so one week from yesterday, three weeks from the day that this project <laughs> became a thing. Um, and we put together an hour-long TV program um, to really bring this to the widest audience possible. Yeah, and... Um I am excited for, we are all excited to, for you guys to experience that and, um, and then tell us what you think, right? Those, those songs, uh, those versions will be the first of its kind with the orchestra yeah. um, and your voice and, and, and everything else. Um, Tyler, um, how long have you been working together and is it really easy now? I, I'm guessing you've been working together in recordings and touring and stuff like that, but... Uh, uh, is it really fast to, uh, to, to kind of find arrangements and, and find other instruments? You so <laughs> after, you the, after, the TEDx, <laughs> after the TEDx meet, uh, meeting, we, we worked on his, some songs on his album, Love is Love. Uh, we did To Dad. There was, uh, I don't know, th like two or three or four songs on there that, yeah, that we would help. Anonymity, To Dad, The Reprise, yeah. Dance With Me. I think there was one more. And you'll see Dance With Me and, and To Dad on this program as well. And then and we did a theater score together. We collaborated on a theater score. Yeah. Which was really fun. And then, um, and then so this is sort of the next project. So we've been collaborating for the last year and a half, two years, I think. And um, we've done some t uh, touring a little bit. I've played in the string section. Yeah. Um, we had a wonderful tour planned beginning oh, of this year. I know. But um, 
I'll spare you the details of that. Everybody knows what happened in March. So, <laughs> so in, in, in terms of arranging process, an orchestration process, Ron has very much an ear for orchestration and arranging. And so it's kind of a mix, just depending on time. Uh, sometimes he'll send stuff that's fleshed out in logic and I'll take it and make it work for an ensemble or the size we have and I'll fill in and I'll paint textures here and there. Um, sometimes I'll do an arrangement outright and, and Ron will either like it or he doesn't and then we may have to do another version. Or, um, and uh, so it's kind of a mix of processes which is fun and, and um, yeah, so we put it's, together a, a it's team. Definitely fun. We put together a team for this compressed timeline, and that was super helpful. Uh -huh. So we had a friend of mine, a colleague, orchestrator, and composer Justin Rawls helped sort of, uh, sort of create this assembly line process, so we could get stuff into you know uh, score format. I could make all the tweaks I needed to, and 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 flesh out the arrangements, and then we could bring it to the stage. So uh, that's great because sometimes it takes twenty people to to do what you just did. Well, we, right? we yeah, we did yeah. do it as a team. Like it reminds me a lot of the stories I hear about how Hollywood works in terms of uh -huh. the compressed timelines and getting stuff out the door. Um, so it, it was a yeah. team effort for sure. I, I did mention this on the uh, sounds of the season program on, on Saturday, but not any sort of comparison, but Handel did write the entire Messiah <laughs> in 18 days. Yeah, rub it in. Okay. That was a three, I mean. You know. So, um, Going from Handel and, and Ron, you mentioned that your dad uh, did some Motown. And actually, when I grew up, uh, I, I love Motown, you know, Marvin Gaye, all yeah. these tunes. And, um, and actually, there's some nice, lush uh, string sounds in, in Motown. Uh, but I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm sort of ignorant. Um, your inspirations, and because I don't know, I, I hear all those terms, you know, like soul, R&B, blues, Funk. How about some names? Yes, or yeah. or like, I don't. We don't have an hour for you to educate me as as far as what is what exactly. But yeah. w where is your inspi inspiration? I the simplest way for me to say it is I am intensely drawn to any music where I can feel the conviction of the heart of that performer, meaning uh -huh. whatever they're singing about and putting and performing or pu playing that they believe every note, every note is personal to them. That's what's drawn me in so intensely to music. And I felt that with like Pavarotti, Charles Aznavour, I don't know of many yes. people. I love Charles Aznavour, yes. La Boema. Uh -huh. Ah, that song, I, for many years I loved listening to that song and I never understood a word. And I still, I just would cry listening to it. Uh -huh. And then it's all the way to like Marvin Gaye, Donny Hathaway, Ray Charles, it's, uh, Jazz, it's Oscar Peterson, George Benson, um, Keith Jarrett. Uh, in classical, it's like Itzhak Perlman, Jacqueline Dupont. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Uh, Dupre. Dupre, thank you. <laughs> Why did I say but, but, Dupont? No, I, you're, you're, you, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing the, to it's know me. It's so many, it's just emotions and composers. I love listening to Ryoichi Sakamori. He did some um, scoring for like Sheltering Sky, The Little Buddha, and those. The thing is like all these different people from different places, their goal was for you to feel something. Their goal was, you don't have to understand anything about how I created this, but you're gonna feel what it means. Now, when you were you know, 11, 12 years old and you're starting to becoming a singer, did you have to, in order to express what you're feeling, you know, did you have to actually train? Or how much training did you actually Learn the piano by yourself, the guitar by yourself, or uh, how? My, my, when it came to music theory, my dad was really strict. Uh -huh. He said you have to learn all the rules before you can break them. And it's um, I always compare it to something um, Bruce Lee used to say. He said, "When before you're a student, a punch is just a punch, kick is just a kick. Then you become a student, and there's 200 punches, 200 kicks. You're not a master again until a punch is just a punch and a kick is just a kick. And uh -huh. it's the same." approach that a lot of my teachers and my dad had to music. Learn all of these things so that you can let them all go and just remove yourself from the channel of exchange to reaching the person. It's not about what you know in that moment, it's about what are you conveying, what are you feeling? And to me that made absolutely no sense between 13 and 20 whatever, it's like, 
a minor scale is a minor scale, a major scale is a major scale. Oh. And I think the biggest fallout I had with my dad about music theory, we had a lot of arguments about music theory. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, there's a lot of things to argue about, but I'm sitting there, I'm arguing with my dad one day, and I'm so furious because he's playing this chord that doesn't fit with this other chord as far as theory goes. And he says, at the height of the argument, he's like, it's called music theory, not music law. <laughs> I was speechless. Huh. And, and I was just like, huh? wait, you can't say that. And he's like, that's what it is. Amazing story. Yeah, and, it, and just ever since then, I must have been about 26. And ever since that day, it's just like, how can you convey something in a way that is so musical, so feeling, but not sound like you're just regurgitating something, but like that you care for the listener more than you do yourself. And Tyler, you come from a maybe different perspective education, but now, now today you both work together. Tell us about, did you become a violinist first or your musical life? My musical life? I've been playing violin since uh, I, I was a little, I started learning in public school in fourth grade. Were your parents grade. musicians? No, my parents aren't musicians. I picked wow. up the violin because uh, of an Itzhak Perlman tape. <laughs> hey, um, he is, there's no other like him. Exactly. And then um, and I'd been composing all through high school, honestly. I w but how, how, where did you get that bug with that you wanted to start writing? I think film music a lot. I was obsessed with film music. I mean, I still am, but... Uh, and then, I, and then I went to school and focused on violin, but I would always take composition lessons and it was a big part of my um, education. I just never chose to switch lanes and major in it. But. That's amazing. Yeah, I wanna get your feedback on something and no pressure because the composer is in the room. Sometimes you sit down for a pops gig and you come in with a certain mentality not you personally, musicians in general, orchestral musicians. Mm -hmm. What I took away from what I heard on stage last night uh, was a tremendous amount of complexity, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, integration between what Ron was doing and what the orchestra was doing um, you know, we, we always have the, you know, are you going to show up and are, gonna, are there going to be footballs on the page, we like to call them, you know, big old, big old hole notes, <laughs> um, where you're just kind of, you're, you're there to just be there for someone else to play on top of. Is that what you experienced yesterday? Absolutely not. I mean, I, I thought it was very groovy. First of all, there was, a, I, I thought, the reason why I ask you about, you know, soul and R&B and blues, because I thought there was great variety um, between all the, the, the songs. And, and it was never just one size fits all or just one style throughout the whole um, um, session. And I, I like the variety and, you know, some of the, the, those 12 8 beats you had, you know, the, the slow ones. And, and it just, and back to what you were saying, it's just like, I felt like the music was very genuine and authentic. And, and then you kind of immerse yourself um, so, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a stereotype, you know, we are classical musicians and we can be a little stiff, which is something I just loathe when I hear that because maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes, but um, we just enjoy every, every music that is genuine, authentic and, and soulful, right? So, um, and like I said, when I grew up, I, I would listen to, to um, Motown, to Marvin Gaye. I just loved him. Um, Anybody who songs. thinks you're stiff has not seen you play a violin no. solo. No. <laughs> I mean, every bit of your yeah. body is moving. You're so, it's like. Be on I was, the lookout for that yeah. solo. I was looking at you in that moment, and I was in the piano, and I was just playing the chords, and I just stopped, and I was just looking at you, just like, it's so much. Emotion is there, and that's something you can't really put on a page. You can, you can write it there and there, but everybody interprets it different. And that's like what stuck out with me with Itzhak Perlman. It's like, he is gone. He is, he is out of his body. He is in that vibrations of sound and space that is going into us. And I've, I've felt something like that when you're, when you're playing, and when I was watching some of the videos on YouTube of you before we came, uh, the, the other day, but I have to say, being in person 
and just feeling that it's like well the, the, the thing though is yeah i mean it, it's that's kind of the ultimate goal and, and but i don't know maybe if tyler if you will agree with me but sometimes you have to work really hard at it and so in the end you have to make so natural but there's so much processing going mm. into your brain you know am i doing this right am i playing in tune and stuff like that mm. so that maybe you need like you were training with your father you know you need to purify in the end it's only the purity that comes out and and you're, you maybe you got that a few years ago i'm still working on it right <laughs> i, I oh. yeah i oh. i mean it, it's it, it's it's a it's a complex complex yeah. part but um yeah I, I, the other thing i did i wanted to mention is that um, like working with Ron and Tyler, uh, a good friend of yours, uh, Jake Shimabukuro, and, and, and you two um, have so much respect and, and, and uh, there's so much reverence towards classical musician, but uh, you, you need to know that musicians like myself have so much respect for you and Jake because what you do is just so special as well. You know, it's just maybe we had so many training of solfege, music theory, counterpoint, fugal treatment, ear training, and things like that. But, but you know, in the end, hopefully, we can meet somewhere. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I got to say, man, it's like, that's, that's what I feel when I was listening to you guys. Even when I've come to some of the concerts where you play before, and it's just like listening, and it's like, it's like I can just close my eyes. I keep saying it, but I can just close my eyes and just disappear in my chair. Mm. It's like, it's so, such an experience. And that's why it's so special to work with Tyler, it's like, because he's not approaching his music like just ones and twos and threes and fours and just a lot of that was on those pages. It was like us like butting heads in a really creative, <laughs> constructive way. I was like, I think it should go this way. And he's like, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, okay. And then he would sneak something in there and I'm listening back and I'm like, what is that? He's like, just wait till everyone's playing it, and then tell me if you don't like it. This is where the compressed timeline worked in my favor. <laughs> <Or yours>. because, <laughs> yeah, because as, as a person who's played in symphony, I, of course, also have that notion of you go to a Pops concert, and you're like, oh, I'm going to get a bunch of footballs, which yep. I hate. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I kind of gently nudge Ron in this direction where I want to add this complexity. I want the underlying textures and layers to be as interesting as what Ron's doing. That way we have something truly unique at the end of it. Yeah. What, Tyler, let me ask you something. So when you work with a lot of uh, artists like Ron or others, there are so many different versions sometimes. Um, there's the, the, <laughs> the, the, the version you do on, in, on a CD, mm -hmm. there's a version you can do with an orchestra, there's a version you do like just as a band. Yep. Is it sometimes a little bit uh, nerve-wracking? Because yeah. you don't know which version you're going to end up yeah. having? Yeah, if we want to talk just process for a second. Um, we When we set the... When we finally sort of the dust settled and I was like, okay, this is happening and I have to write all of these arrangements and orchestrations, how's this gonna happen? I, I, I sketched out, I went into Ron's catalog and I sort of sketched out a possible arc and I said, what do you think of this? And then Ron and I went back and forth a bunch about maybe what it could look like and how it could shape and what story it could tell. And so what we settled on I think is just absolutely gorgeous. And so that also shaped how I wanted to think about the textures and, and the, the sounds. And I wanted there to be musical differentiation throughout the whole different landscapes we would walk through, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I just forgot the essence of your question. Is when you have, you, when you're used to... Uh, yes, just, it's the just technical, yeah, yeah. different versions. Right, so, different versions. Yeah, so this is where I was going was uh, we basically said, okay, this is the canonical reference we're recording we're going to use, which is from this album or from this... Uh, video take or whatever, so it was put in a spreadsheet. <laughs> but Ron, is, this is where the difference between our worlds meets, right? Because in the classical world, you show up with the charts and you have the schedule and this is what we're doing and nothing really changes. In Ron's Roadmap world, is very clear. Yeah, in Ron's world, you show up and it's like, hey, I, I, we feel like doing this, right? I never, it's like <laughs> my bassist, Ernie, who was here yesterday, he took the set list home and framed it. He made me sign it. <laughs> He's like, because I never in my life have ever played the same song the same way twice and have never stuck to a set list. I've written out many set lists. I've left them on my dashboard in my car. I've left them backstage. I've even brought them as far as on stage. And I just, 
you know, I sit there, I look at my bandmates, I look out to the audience, and I'm like, let me see what huh. you need right now. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we do that. So when we were doing this massive workload, he was like, okay, so this is what we all agree on? This is the final? And I'm like, yeah, don't worry, I won't change anything but the key. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the joke. Yeah, that was the joke going on, and it's it's just like it was sweat going down my brow. I that's the thing, though. I think a lot of us classical musicians are jealous of, though, the ability to just go in, sit down, and just go with the moment, right? But, yeah. but that's the other beautiful thing. I mean, you somehow have ten, sixteen, seven, twenty, seventy people on a stage at one time to wake one chord together. Yep. That doesn't happen without that level of organization That's and true. selflessness. I think that is the word. It's like everyone's becoming one person. Those chairs, every, that's one thing that's mesmerizing to me about a symphony. Those chairs, every person there has an immense story of how they went through their life and got to that chair. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, everyone becoming one, mm -hmm. it is so, it's... It's so amazing. It's, it's like a testament to this planet, how this earth works. It's so amazing. And to experience that, it really is two worlds. And it's like, it takes, it takes like give and take of a translation for it to mm -hmm. grow together. And, but it's so beautiful. And the, I'm just so grateful for the outcome of what I heard yesterday. It's just well, journey. It's, it's the music that makes it possible yeah. so we yeah. can be as one. It was beautiful. That's one of the best descriptions of an orchestra I think I have ever heard. Yeah. You might have to bottle that up and frame it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, so along amazing. With that set list. I was, <laughs> and that's right next to the set list. Yeah. <laughs> so, can, speaking of, of while we're on this topic, we, we didn't get to use the full orchestra uh, because we did it here at the Hawaii Theater Center, and so we didn't have the capacity yet. Uh, to have all 64 musicians on stage. so Because of the physical distancing. The physical distancing, yes. Uh, and so you had some instrumentation that we worked around. We knew it would fit, and we ended up having about 20 on stage, I think is what we ended up with in total. Mm -hmm. uh, but you were able to play with the, the brass parts really uniquely and to really create some fun colors, uh, some woodwind and brass chorale type things that I, I thought I, I particularly enjoyed. Um, but, Ron, can you tell us what it's like to, to play with an orchestra that, uh, how is it different? So, I, I want it with, <laughs> I want to find the right words. It is an out-of-body experience and it's amazing, but doing it on, with that size orchestra for the first time, there's a lot of give and take and a lot to learn in the moment. I mean, we had, we had our rehearsal, we had our lunch break, and then we had a recording session. And during that lunch break, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> like, how do you, it's a, it's a new language. It's almost like not becoming a different, a new artist, but becoming this, learning this space of where everything gets together. In a trio on stage, in a, in a jazz club environment, you three, you lock in each other, you push, you pull, you move, you sway, you do all these different things for emotional texture. And in an orchestra, you have this, you're this huge body where it takes so many elements for one step to happen and then the next step to happen. And so you're like, okay, how, where do we find where the pulse originates? And then how do you lock into that? It's this really big body. It's a lot to take in for the first, for the, I, was, I was laughing at myself for a while there and I was like, Okay, let me just breathe, let me let it go. Is the downbeat on the toe, on the middle foot, or on my heel? <laughs> and that was the thing to find there. And I, th I think once, once, once that settled in, I was like, there she is. Oh wait, that's a wrap? Okay. <laughs> and it was, it was so amazing, it was such an experience when I was just like, I, I honestly, honestly, I can't wait to do it again. And, and the orchestra is going to get bigger the next time you join us. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So they, I'll, I'll be like, okay, are we doing? Is, is it a toe? Is it midfoot? Or is it heel? Let me see where. Let me see what that downbeat is. But, but, forget how it flows. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Tyler, you must be used to that. That, that classical musicians and their sense of pulse. I mean, and we talk about it many times here. But uh, yeah, uh, Ron and I had a conversation about this because I know from playing in orchestras. Uh, 
for so long that the, the, where the ictus is isn't really, you don't play right on the ictus, right? It's like, bump. <laughs> and it's this really jarring thing you get used to being an orchestral musician. So we did have a conversation about that. And I was like, so be ready to expect that it's, it's, it's going to look different. It's this giant organism that takes a while for the whole thing to move. Um, I, but it, I don't think a conversation can... can <laughs> no. To, can, right. you, you have to be there. You have to feel that. You have to feel it. And then, and, then, and then also, there's moments when everyone swells together where you have to remember to keep playing. Because you were overtaken by the moment? Uh, yeah, there was a couple of those moments where, awesome. I'm just like, where I'm just like, wow. Oh, shoot. What yeah, piece, what one, piece was two, it? three. Um, okay, back into it. It, was in, um, it definitely happened and take some time. And then even in a um, piece of um, um, Let Me Dance On, yep. like there was that swelling moment that sort of come out of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm just in the middle of that. It's like, whoa. Okay, yep. well, oh, wait, wait. Because it's like, and I was just like, wow. Oh, yeah, Ron, where are you? There, there I am. <laughs> Here I am. And uh, that's the fun thing about, you know, about just learning it. It's just like, it's sitting in there. It, I think it's, it's so much fun and it makes me really want to grow as an artist. Yeah. Yeah. So we have actually two conductors uh, that both conducted the HSO this week. So should we have a little conductor? Yes, no. yes, Iggy. Uh, Iggy conducted our Sounds of the Season performance on Saturday evening nice. and he conducted, he then picked up a violin and played two concertos with the orchestra. No, 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 half, well, anyway. It, it, Worth 20 minutes of concerto. <laughs> nice. What, what was it like Ig, on, on Saturday, Iggy, back on the podium? Um, I'll get to the technical first. Uh, por- uh, the technical feeling is that you're conducting, and then, so I don't know if it's because my arms were flailing in, up in the air, and then there's less blood flow going up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm done conducting, and so I put my arms down, and I still... Something's wrong with the, the blood flow because they were always like that, right? <laughs> and then I still have to start playing. And I noticed a little bit at rehearsal too, it's like the, the blood flow is not quite the same. I don't have time to warm up. So it was a bit of an adjustment. Mm-hmm. But um, more importantly, I think it, 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 not just for me, but for me, I, I hope it, it was a very special moment for everyone. It's, you know, it's the end of the year. We all, uh, even though it's been a long, tenuous year, we, we still celebrating. Um, I know many things have happened to around the world, personally, things like that, but it's just nice to be together uh, this week and, and, and to share the music. And um, I, I especially like, uh, Dave and I actually concocted this program together. So I, I, I think it was a great selection of, of different styles. You know, from Piazzolla to Handel, and we had wonderful artists, Martina Bingham on, on singing. We had Kanoe Miller and Pohainani um, on, on ukulele and, and hula dancing, and we also had Anna Lenhart. So it was a great, a beautiful experience. It, it was a tremendously diverse program that fit together like just a perfect holiday puzzle. For my Kai, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I missed uh, our, our ukulele player's name, singer. Well, and that performance is available on demand uh, through our box office here at the Hawaii Theater Center. So I, if you haven't, I would encourage you to go and have a listen to that. It certainly warmed my heart, uh, although being from the Midwest, I'm feeling quite warm at the moment. It's um, very nice <laughs> to finish with, with a couple uh, um, um, tunes, Christmas tunes, but with Hawaiian artists. Yeah. Um, Tyler, uh, is this your first time to Hawaii or have you been here before? Uh, I've been to Oahu one other time. Uh, but this is um, this is the first time as uh, on a professional level. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First time on a professional level. And any, I, I don't know how it can get better than this. <laughs> I mean, like this was a remarkable experience. I really appreciate uh, the legwork that it took uh, from you, Dave, and from the, all the crew backstage, and and from Ron for making this opportunity happen, and Iggy for uh, uh, leading the strings. It just but you haven't had much time to enjoy the islands, I guess? Uh, no, you? that comes next. That comes next. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Ron, um, you, you said something interesting um, before we started. You, you come back to Hawaii and you feel rejuvenated? Or you? Yeah, it's, it's like... More and more than that. Yeah, it, it, there's, there's this indescribable energy of, 
of being in Hawaii. And for me, it's like the first thing I do is I'll get off the plane, I'll get to the North Shore, my favorite spot on the island, and I'll just get out of my <laughs> shoes. And it, you can really just feel... Because you energy. used to live in Haleiwa? Or? Yeah, I used to live in Haleiwa for, I think, about 12, 12 14 years. And it just, you just feel this, this energy is in, on these islands, and I just love it, man. It's like I, I come back to just recharge. And I, what about the food? Or, so, sorry, Tyler. Oh, that, the food, that's... Yeah, you can't get... You can't, you cannot get the food here anywhere else. Mm. It's, it's so beautiful, man. I have one goal here. I'm gonna, uh, I wanna go out on this trip with Joss Nakazawa and maybe, maybe Jake. A colleague of the join. symphony. Mm. Yeah, and go spearfishing and catch my first wow. spearfish. Go right to the beach, get the scales off and cook it right there and eat it. That's, that's what, I have never done that in my life. So that's one thing I wanna do this trip. Oh. Tyler, you wanna say something? I was just gonna say, uh, Ron getting into the island vibe, I could tell, because I FaceTimed him. He came a few days earlier than me, and I FaceTimed him, and I was like, and I'm just, you know, staying up late, and my beard is growing out, and I'm working all these arrangements. I could just tell. He had this, like, Gigi. he had this smile, and this sort of, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, you're both based out of? Portland, yeah. Yeah, we're by, both in Portland right now. I've been there for about a year. Did you guys, um, I know in Southern Oregon they had bad, f bad fires mm. about a couple months ago. Did, did the sky affect mm. Portland? Yeah. Yeah, it was really orange. It was really, really crazy. Did you, the, what did you feel at that time where you had the pandemic and then you had the fires? I mean, under was siege? that the end of the world? Yeah, it was, like, it was like, you know what? If Godzilla came out of the ocean, I'd say, wait, I'm getting my Starbucks right now. It was that kind of year. It's like, what's next? It's like, what's going to phase you? It's like, during that time, we had, we had this tremendous project called Live in the Studio. And, and it's, it's on YouTube and everything. But we had, we had planned, we'd done all this stuff. And then everyone flew in. The band was all rehearsed. All the guests were there. The day, I think it was three days before the recording session. And I call up the engineer. And he's like, I had to evacuate the studio. Mm. I had to evacuate my family from my home. The fires are coming over there. We had to... We, we're, we just can't be there. And we call an audio, a friend drove three hours with his mobile studio and we went into a church and we did this whole production. But if you stepped outside or opened a window, you couldn't breathe. After five seconds, the cloud was that thick over all of Portland. What was that, that live in studio? I, I saw a clip where it's like animation or claymation or? No, that's, a, that's, that's, another, another, that's another piece we did. Okay. That's for the song In My Heart that we performed okay. yesterday. Oh, well, that was so much fun there. To get to get the orchestrations and everything in, in play, it's like that's another one of those things. Uh, I know I'm getting off the question, but it's like, Ron, what version are we gonna play? <laughs> <laughs> what version are we gonna do? And and oh my goodness, it was so much that it's so funny again because I'm just someone I don't play the same song the same way twice, ever. And I'm like, we're in the middle. I'm like, what did I do two years ago? How did I play it two years ago? I well, what's funny about that particular piece, too, is that the animator cut it in a way that Ron never performs it. So, and that was our reference right. recording. Yes. So then he was like, oh, wait, I got to learn what the animator did. Yeah, it was an amazing piece, but we, we shortened it to get, I think, two, two and a half minutes or three minutes to get on the video. And I was like, so... Full disclaimer, Tyler, I've never, ever performed it that way. <laughs> I've got to listen to the recording and learn it. And so it was, it was, it was so much fun. What an experience. Yeah. We've got a few questions that I want yes. to yes. make sure we get to. Uh, the first one I'm very curious about as well. We're really glad you're here now, but when are you coming back? When will you be in Hawaii next? Do you have shows here coming up with the symphony or otherwise? Oh, I, I, you know what? I was just talking about our friend Kristen Jackson. I was just talking to her today, and we just confirmed something. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what the dates are or anything. Sorry, Kristen, if I'm not allowed to. But, <laughs> but, but. but I'll be back in February, and um, I, I'd love to do something again. Together. I mean, I'll that's be, two months away. That's two months away. I mean, that's two months time to plan something, right? I, I need to get down charts, to the two yeah. weeks. <laughs> I need to get down to the two week window. But yeah, I'll be back out here in February, if not sooner, to do something. I mean, I can't be. Uh, I was away from home since March, so yeah, I, I'm overdue to do. I don't know, four, five, six, seven trips back, depending on what the climate of 
our wild world is doing. Well, we like to hear that. Uh, a question for Iggy. I'll um, spare the one about your hair products that we got, um, but this is one. Uh, is there a particular reason you did not use a baton to conduct on Saturday? Wow. There is actually, I mean, okay, so I like to go swimming. So I swim, but I'm not a swimmer. I'm, not, I'm a terrible swimmer. I drive my car, but I'm not a driver. I'm not, I don't think I'm a good driver. And so I conduct. But I don't really call myself a conductor, so that's why I'm not um, carrying a baton. Uh, but I did have a little bit of a, not a chopstick, but uh, it was kind of a long pan that um, actually Nancy Shup Wu uh, from the symphony offered me when she went on a trip to Africa. Um, so it, it's a, it was a hand-carved uh, wood, wooden pan, and so I, I do like to have a little bit of a, uh, a direction. Um, um, but I don't have, um, I don't feel like I've earned a baton yet. And, but they, they do come in, I don't know, you have a wider selection of, of baton, right, Tyler? When you uh, they do. I mean, I haven't really checked them all out. I've had <laughs> one for a while and I just like it, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> on, next, on next week's show is uh, selecting your baton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Selecting your baton. Yes, stay tuned. Baton That'll be, uh, selection. Yes. Uh, Rod, uh, you have some family members who are musicians as well. Do you get together and jam? Well, yes, yes and no. I mean, I don't know why people, why we have to grow up, but we had a family band for so long, and now a, a lot of us- A big family, right? Big family. There's 11 kids in my family, six boys and five girls, and um, we used to have family band uh, for years, and then I started doing a lot of work with my brother, Thunderstorm, who is just on the voice and everything. And he's just an amazing songwriter and we do a lot of collaborative work. And then I developed the trio, which one of my brother was in that. He was my drummer for the longest time. So there's a lot of family collaborations that happen here and there. And I hope that one day that my kids decide to start learning instruments. I mean, I don't want to push him, but I would be pretty happy. <laughs> well, and uh if you need one more reason to, to tune into the show, just keep your eyes peeled to the very last piece on <laughs> yeah. the program. Yes. Uh, I think there is uh, some budding talent uh, in the family. Yes. Uh, and, and also, uh, two very special guests that we should say yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one, uh, man, I was incredibly honored. Um, there were two guests. Uh, Mike Love, if you don't know who he is, please look him up. Not the Beach Boy. I know there's another Mike Love out there, but, um, and then Kavika Kahiapo. Um, many people in Hawaii know who he is. I was just super honored that he made time to come by. And I did not tell him that he would be joining me with a symphony. <laughs> I just told him, hey, I'm doing a show. I would love it if you come and help me play this song. And, uh, and he showed up, but he was blown away because he, he just got to stand and listen to the song. But the last song, that, those two on that song, it was just absolutely amazing. It was absolutely it was, magical. Yeah. yeah. So, is there any way that maybe we could convince you here as our, our time winds down to maybe take us out over there on the, on the keys? Yeah, well. Before we do, let's talk a, about a, a few details here because apparently we've been very evasive for the audience here this evening. So, uh, Journey Together, it's the title of the show, Ron Artis II and the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. This will be airing on Monday, December 21st at 6.30 p.m. on KGMB. Thursday, December 24th, uh, so Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. Uh, on K5. And then on Sunday, December 27th at 10.30 p.m. on KGMB. All presented by Hawaii News Now and our sponsor, Central Pacific Bank Foundation and Saks Fifth Avenue. So. Dave, another event that yes. we're involved in. Well, yes, and if you, there will be additional content uh, that will, behind the scenes that we've put together, some additional material that will not be on the TV broadcast, and that will be available through our website and through the Hawaii Theater Center box office. And this is a fundraiser. We need financial support in the arts to make sure that live entertainment continues for the next 6, 12, 24 years, and that uh, we fly away 
Um, I see. Oh, um, <laughs> Iggy, what was that? <laughs> was uh, yes, um, Iggy. Uh, <laughs> Iggy would like me to remind everyone, and I would like to remind you as well that the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra and Ballet Hawaii our made-for-television Nutcracker broadcast will be on KITV on Saturday at 7 p.m. So you can, in the next week and a half here, you will hear the HSO on television six times for free. So remember that in your year-end giving. Um, thank you all for your support. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Tyler and Ron, an absolute pleasure to get to work with both of you. I can't wait for what's next. Thank you. And Iggy, as always, a joy. Mahalo for your support. We're going to have Ron take us out. All right. Hey. Every day there's something new And some days The mind will tell us what to do I feel the world around Fading slowly And all the pain we found Disappears And some days I'm just a millionaire To some days Just a step away You told me that it's easy to lose heart You tell me that it's easy To count yourself out now Oh, I ask you Have a little faith So all I'm here to ask you ooh, is have a little faith now. Cause all, all of these problems will fade. And all I can give is my heart and soul. I hope that you realize gonna be fine be fine yo yo gonna be fine so much a little improvisation there beautiful <laughs>